the Hello Instagram. I believe I'm live on both of you at the moment. Um, I'm Caroline Buckley um, and I'm going to be chatting about Plays Rough London today. Um, I'm going to leave a few minutes just so people can join us. Um, I'm not sure if I'm live on Facebook yet but I think I actually am. Um, okay, this is the first time I've done this so, oh, I can wave at people, that's fun. Um, okay, uh, so like I said, I'll give a few minutes for people to join us. Um, so this is something that the King's Head Theatre is doing every weekday um, at 1pm. And if you miss any, they also um, upload them onto uh, their uh, website as well. Okay, great. I am on Facebook. Cool. So, um, like I said, I'm Caroline Buckley and I'm going to be talking about Plays Rough London. Um, it's a new writing night that I've been running for the last four years. Uh, firstly, thank you to the King's Head Theatre for asking me to be involved um, and for providing such a brilliant resource for theatre makers in such an odd time. Like I said, I'm live on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm going to be checking them both regularly. So if you do have any questions, please ask them um, and I'll be uh, having a look and answering them as best I can. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to try and cover a few different things over the next half an hour uh, from how and why Plays Rough London was founded, um, a brief overview of our past events um, and what we learned from them uh, to what we look for in a script. Along the way hopefully I'll give some tips for writers, for producers, for theatre makers. Um, I'll also discuss how we're adapting uh, to producing work online um, and I'll let you know how you can get involved with our next event. Um, so firstly, to give you a little bit of background on myself, um, I'm a writer and producer. Um, aside from Plays Rough, I've worked on a variety of projects, um, including a docuplay about the history and hauntings of the Old Red Lion Theatre, um, and a satirical musical called um, Grab Em By The Pussy, and other work in both theatre and film. I'm just going to check I'm still on Instagram. Um, I think I'm going to have to keep uh, tapping it because it's going dark. Okay, but I will do that. Um, and to give you an overview of what Plays Rough London does, uh, we produce new writing nights. Um, each night is a different theme or brief. Uh, we have open submissions for writers. Uh, directors um, and actors. We provide rehearsal space. Uh, we often photograph and video the performances as well. Um, our aim is to facilitate personal creative growth and the development of projects. So we encourage participants to take risks. Uh, we're more about creating an environment um, where uh, you can kind of explore things, uh, you can improve your skills, uh, less so about staging perfect polished performances. Um, our only stipulation is that uh, scripts are off book. Um, plays that were first performed at uh, Plays Rough have gone on to full length shows um, and be performed around the globe. Um, it's also a great environment to meet other creatives who you can go on to work with in future. Right, I'm just going to move Instagram so you're easier for me to uh, tap and not so you don't go uh, dark because I'm not actually sure if you can still see me uh, when it does that. There we go. And I'll move you so you don't keep seeing my arms going in front of it. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so let's make me not so bright on Instagram. Um. So I co-founded Plays Rough London um, at the beginning of 2016 while studying a two-year MA in playwriting with fellow classmate Matilda Curtis and uh, Matthew Jameson, who was a theatre maker we knew. Um, we just felt we needed to see our writing uh, performed in front of an audience in a low-risk environment. And on our course, the only chance uh, you really had to see your performance performed um, was in a rehearse reading, it was just a short extract right at the end of the course. 
um, and we assumed the uh, best way to improve your skills as a writer uh, was to see how directors and actors interpreted your work and then to see how audience audiences reacted to seeing it performed um, and for that simple reason Plays Rough London uh, was formed. Um, the first event uh, was in the back room of a pub. Um, there was only a, a curtain separating us from drinkers um, and I'm not gonna lie it wasn't the ideal venue. Uh, the pub was so loud you couldn't really hear the actors. Um, and so for the next event, uh, we upgraded to a classroom in our university. Um, the good news was that you could now hear the performances, uh, but the bad news was we overran and ended up getting locked inside. But don't worry, uh, we made it out after some time. Um, one of our next events was one of our most adventurous uh, ones and one we learned a lot from. Um, it was called well, we called it a theatre crawl. Um, it was essentially an outdoor tour around Angel of five site-specific plays. Um, logistically, it was one of the most complicated things to plan. Uh, the audience met in the snug area of the Old Red Lion Theatre pub, which is a section that's cordoned off from the rest of the pub. Um, we also sold our tickets through their website. Um, and they didn't charge us anything for this, which was really wonderful of them. It was performed over two nights and it, each night had three different tours running. So I think they were about 20 minutes apart, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so each tour had a different guide that would lead them around and the actors would be waiting at their site and then they get to perform the show three times each night, six times in total. Um, the two main things that we learned from this event uh, well, firstly, uh, maybe don't do outdoor theatre in November. Um, and secondly, for each event, there needs to be someone who is just a producer uh, and their only role is to oversee the event. Um, at the time, what we would do is we co-produce, uh, but we'd also write. And then sometimes we would direct and perform as well. Uh, this meant our minds were kind of on too many things. Um, and so we were not there to solve problems when they came up. So going forward, we set a rule uh, that for each night, there must be someone whose job is to solely produce. Um, for the next few events, what we did was we tried a few different venues, uh, but for our last six events, uh, we've performed solely at the Old Red Lion Pub Theatre. Uh, this is just because they're incredibly supportive. Um, they would always offer us advice. Um, they would give us as much tech time as they possibly could and they wouldn't charge us any more for that. Um, they would also give us free rehearsal space and they would shout out about our event on social media. Um, it's also such an atmospheric space in case you haven't been. Uh, the audience is at a right angle um, and so as an audience member uh, when you're watching a play you're experiencing the play but also the rest of the audience's reactions at the same time. So it's very much a collective experience. Um, yeah, over the past events we developed, uh, we changed and we improved what we were doing in a lot of ways. Um, the benefits we had got from the night ourselves of improving our writing, meeting other creatives, um, and using it as a launch pad for projects, uh, they, these were things we wanted to offer to other theatre makers as well. Uh, so we decided to have open submissions um, at the beginning, this was kind of just for one um, or two of the plays, but gradually as we went along, it became what it is today, uh, where all participants are selected from open submissions. Um, I think being able to offer this sort of experience for emerging artists, is, I think it's invaluable for the industry. There's a lot of scratch nights out there and they just enable us to hone our craft, as I say, in a low risk environment. Um, that being said, we do have to acknowledge that they don't reach everyone. Uh, only people who have jobs that are, are like flexible and can get the time off work and can also afford to get the time off work can participate. Uh, so I think this is something we need to address and think of ways that we can make uh, Plays Rough more accessible to all. Uh, we also don't uh, offer anything for producers at the moment and this is something we want to change. We're considering how we can do this. but. Um, if 
there is any emerging or like aspiring producers out there um, who want to have a chat, just get in touch uh, to playsroughlondon at gmail.com. And I'm happy to chat with you, give you any advice on fringe theatre um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, please get in touch. So as I said, ah, okay. So apparently it keeps uh, breaking up on Facebook. I have a, a, I have an inkling that it might break up on Instagram as well. I think that might just be um, my internet. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. So I'll just keep going. Um, and then any gaps, I will just write them down after so people can have a read. Um, and just to remind it, if you do have any questions at all, please do ask. Um, and then I will be able to uh, speak about what you want to hear about. Okay, so one thing um, I also thought would be helpful um, as well was to go over how we produce each night, like stage by stage. Um, it might be useful for someone who's never produced a scratch night before and is interested um, in starting. Um, it's something that we've developed on the job. Um, I'm sure other nights are produced differently, uh, but this is just the way that works for us. Um, the first job is one of the funnest. Um, we just decide on the theme or the brief uh, for the event. Um, and this can just be anything uh, that we can think of. The fun of the better. Um, the next task is to work out the timeline for the production process. Um, I'll consider how long we need for each part of the process, uh, making sure that we allow enough time for, for things to go wrong, because they sometimes do. You've got to think about things like how long do we want applications to be open for? Um, if we're asking people to write a new script, uh, then we'll need to have applications open for at least four weeks. Uh, but if we're just asking for examples of work, then this can be a short window because um, they can just submit something that they've already written. Um, you'll need to consider and think about things like this uh, for every step of the production. Uh, this is something you'll get an instinct for over time. Um, yeah. The second thing, uh, sorry, the third thing we do is we secure a venue. Um, before I will agree to a date that's been offered, um, I'll make sure that I can arrange enough uh, rehearsal space um, in the two weeks leading up to that date. Uh, you need to create the timeline first just to make sure that you don't like book in a performance date and then realise you don't have enough time to do everything because you find out short tasks add up um, and then you realise you actually need like a four month lead in when you thought it would just be a few weeks. Um, then we would advertise for or um, like approach someone to tech the show um, as well as a photographer and a videographer. Um, we'll also organise someone to host the event. Uh, we find this helps to keep the audience's attention between each play and it really boosts their energy. Um, then we prepare for and launch the applications. Um, this involves creating images and copy that we share on our social media, on our website um, and in a newsletter for people who have signed up for email notifications of when applications open. Um, we also post on certain special interest Facebook groups um, and then we email the BBC Writers Room and London Playwriters Blog and request they share it on their opportunities board. Um, we have a specific email as well for submissions um, with an automatic reply set up just so people know that their submissions have been received. And we realised it was better to have a separate email for submissions and inquiries um, because what we found uh, was that they the questions could get lost in the amount of emails we received um, and we wanted to be replying to them quicker. Um, the next bit is selecting the plays, the directors and the actors. What we'll do usually is we'll start reading the submissions whilst they're still coming in. Um, this part takes most time, again, just to, due to the volume we receive and we want to make sure that we um, give every submission enough attention. Um, when we have selected a play um, and chosen who will direct and perform in it, then we have to work out uh, the rehearsal schedule, 
based on when we have rooms booked and everyone's availability. Now this is actually one of the most challenging parts because often people's availability has changed uh, from what they detailed on the application form. I think this is just the nature of this type of industry and we just do our best to, um, to adapt to people's changing schedules. There'll usually be a lot of emailing back and forth um, until we reach a solution that works for everyone. Um, one tip is when, sorry, is when um, sending out offer emails, it's really, really good um, to set a date for them to get back to you by, because although it's rare, sometimes people just uh, never reply. Um, and so if they don't get back or if they do decline, what you do next is you just email someone else who's suitable um, to ask if they want to take the role. Um, this, when you're creating your timeline, again, this is a point where you want to allow um, a little bit of wiggle room um, as it might take a little bit of time. Um, when it comes to marketing the event, what we currently do is we post on social media, uh, things like play and cast announcements, uh, rehearsal pictures, and to be honest, for now, that's like the extent of our marketing. Uh, we used to produce and print posters, uh, but we found the expense just wasn't worth it because the Old Red is a small venue. We found we sailed out quickly. Um, but I do think that is one of the ways that Plays Rough can grow by increasing the capacity of the venue we perform in. Um, and at that point, we'll probably have to look at different ways of marketing. Um, so as the show date is approaching, um, I'll be checking my emails regularly um, as sometimes people might drop out or might not be able to attend a rehearsal for certain reasons. Um, and you need to be on hand to solve those solutions quickly because usually from going into rehearsals to show, there's not gonna be a lot of time. Um, and then I'll also be putting together a program uh, which we used to print uh, but now we use a QR code and then the audience can look at it on their phones, um, which I think is a great solution to uh, using less paper. Top tip. Um, when we next, what we'll do, oh, we'll work out the running order of the plays. Uh, we always include an interval in our nights just because we feel like the audience uh, usually want a second drink and a chance to di discuss uh, the plays that they've seen so far. Uh, we always want the first half to be the longer of the two. Um, and just like when you're working out a narrative of a play, when you're choosing the running order, you're deciding what journey uh, you want the audience to go on throughout the evening. Um, when show day comes up, uh, there'll be a text schedule. So um, each team will be coming in at different times, but myself and Matthew will be on hand throughout the whole day. Often it's smooth sailing, but I have found out, um, on performance days that I've woken up to things like a techie cancelling. But what I found from this is that people are wonderful and there's usually an incredible person who'll step in and lend a hand at short notice. Um, and then once uh, it's all over, we send an invoice to the theatre for ticket sales, we pay any invoices we've received, and then we start thinking about uh, the next theme for the next event. Okay. Okay, apparently um, it's improving and you're not missing anything of what I'm saying on Facebook, so that's good. Oh, I feel like I've got a question. As what, I'm just going to read it. As what... Okay, so he wants to know how much involvement as um, a producer I have in the rehearsal room and how much autonomy do I give to the actors and creatives? Um, do I take a backseat or am I a are we a collaborative company? I would say we pretty much take a complete backseat. Um, we're not in the rehearsal room. Often uh, we might be on site um, just like to like sitting separate, like literally outside. Um, I don't have any input in how it's staged. Um, I just think that it's the opportunity is there for the actors and directors and writers to create something and I'm uh, there just booking the rooms and, and um, putting talented people together. So yeah, no involvement at all. Um, I also think it might be helpful, again, just do keep asking questions. I think that's the only one I've received on, yeah, it is. Um, and I'll just check on here. 
okay but yeah please ask questions and I'll try and answer them um, yeah so I thought it might be helpful uh, to talk a bit about what we're looking for when we're reading and selecting scripts um, I think obviously when submitting a play to a company or a theatre it's really good to research what they're looking for specifically um, because theatre is subjective and you know companies have certain objectives like working with creatives from a certain area um, that sort of thing um, so it can take a long time to apply for opportunities so it's worthwhile considering um, if they they're looking for the play that you want to submit um, so when we read uh, scripts that plays rough we're looking for a few different things um, we're looking for a play that works um, that fits the brief that's relevant today to, to relevant to today that is entertaining and original and that is clearly saying discussing um, or exploring something um, I'll go into each of these things in a little bit more detail um, so what I mean by a play that works is one where every element of the script is working together to successfully tell a story um, so you want to be asking yourself things like, are the characters well formed? Uh, is their dialogue distinctive and believable? Um, do the characters go on a journey? Um, is it well paced? When you're writing something in short form, naturally you don't have a long time to tell a story. So make sure that the setup is snappy. Um, does the tone and style enhance the story that you're telling? Um, is this series of events events believable um, you can have dramatic things happen obviously it's drama uh, but these things need to be set up in order for them not to feel melodramatic um, I often read plays where people die at the end but it hasn't been set up so it doesn't feel like a conclusive ending uh, you want to be asking yourself is it stageable this um, again depends on the style of play that you're doing if it's naturally uh, if it's a natural play um, then obviously that's a lot harder but if it can be more uh, stylistic then there's creative ways to get around things um, think about the scale you're writing for uh, for us we're a one night scratch night in a pub theatre our resources are going to be limited um, we don't have sets and props and costumes are made of up of things that we can get for free uh, we actually perform on the sets of the shows that will be running at the venue uh, longer term, so like multiple week runs, will just perform on their set as pulled back as it can possibly be. Um, another tip is uh, to do with stage directions. Try not to be too uh, prescriptive, um, especially if it's something that's not contributing to the storytelling. Um, just don't feel the need to write too much in, as most scripts won't require a ton of stage directions. So try and keep them to a minimum um, the moments of silence they're there for the actors and directors to fill um, it's their job to interpret your work after all and to bring it to life and if you do overwrite your stage directions to be honest uh, they'll just be ignored anyway um, that's just the truth um, so we actually will only consider scripts that fit the brief Please keep this in mind, like just when you submit to Plays Rough um, or to any opportunity that's looking for something specific. Uh, for our last event, Factual and Fantasy, uh, we received 470 scripts. Um, as I am a writer myself, um, I can understand that you put a lot of effort into every submission you make. Um, so I make sure I read and consider every script in a fair way. Um, if only scripts written for the brief were submitted, I think we'd receive something closer to like 150. Um, so we're quite a small team, so we just ask, please only submit scripts that are in response to the theme. We are looking for creative responses to this brief. Um, everyone does interpret it really differently. Um, to give you an idea um, of what we mean by responding to the brief, I'll talk about the last five plays we selected which were for the theme factual and fantasy. Um, as you will see, some focus more on one word while some explore the duality. So uh, the play 
audio transcript for Air France Flight 447. They used um, verbatim dialogue that was recorded during a real plane crash. Um, there was also a narrator who, as well as describing the events, spoke about how the accident could have been avoided. Um, the script, She's Not There, was a murder mystery where the murderer claimed that he couldn't have done it uh, because the person he meant to have killed, he made up 